my firm foundation The rock on which I stand And everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's God to show up in their life. 
Who believes that he really won't fail? Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to church. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad to have you this morning. We have a few announcements for you, so if you would turn your attention to the screen. Hi, Hope family. This is Chad with this week's announcements. For those of you who have registered, we'll see you tonight for the special Valentine's date night dinner. Just a reminder that check-in begins at 545 for the kids downstairs, and the activities in the sanctuary begin at 6, where we have your seating arrangements already planned out for you. We have an opportunity to hear the authors of the How We Love marriage materials that we use in our marriage ministry. They are coming to the Linwood area for a two-day seminar on February 24th and 25th. While the topic is on relationships as it pertains to marriage, it will help you understand your personal history and how you relate in other relationships. This would be applicable to anyone single, dating, engaged, or married. We have registration links and more information available on the website and events page in the Hope CC app. Saturday morning, February 25th, is the next women's breakfast event. The gathering will be at 9 a.m. at Tuscany at Des Moines Creek Restaurant. If you would like to join the gathering, please register online, either through our events page in the app or with Pastor Tina. This headcount will help us make reservations with the restaurant. Thanks. This is a reminder about live stream video changes from an announcement we shared a few weeks ago. We will continue to video record our services and post them online Monday mornings. However, for those of you who are unable to attend in person, we would still like to make this live video available to you with an unlisted link. If you feel this applies to you, please reach out to the church office email at office at hope-christian.com. The video link will be emailed weekly. This change begins next week for our February 19th services. But if you do happen to miss service, just catch up with the uploaded video on Monday. Mark your calendars for a fun comedy show in Buren at Taproot Church. The date is Friday, March 24th with comedian and pastor Brett Hollis. We'll be encouraging you guys to invite friends, grab dinner together in Buren beforehand, and come to the show, which will start at 7 p.m., and then stay for a dessert social from 8 to 9 p.m. Ticket prices and purchase details will be announced next Sunday. Here at Hope, there are various ways you can give tithes and offerings. You can drop an envelope in the offering boxes at the back of the sanctuary or in the foyer, and you can also give in our app or online through our website. If you're newer to Hope, there are connect cards in the back of the seats. And if you kindly fill them out, we'd love to reach out and connect with you. You can give that to one of our greeters, drop it in one of the offering boxes, or bring it to the stirring coffee house downstairs for a free welcome drink for you and your entire family. Similarly, after second service on February 26th, we'll be having a meet and greet for those of you who are newer to Hope. It's a great way to find out what we're about, meet some of our elders and staff, and we can answer any questions you might have. We'll have some refreshments, and we'll meet in the church office at 1 p.m. We're glad you're all with us today. To learn more about any of these events or available ministries at Hope, please visit our website at hope-christian.com. All right. Amen. Amen. We have some awesome events going on around here, um, and our media team has asked to remind you that not all of our events make it up onto a Sunday morning announcement, and so we want to encourage you to check out our app, check out our events page, uh, because there's more there, um, and you can do that. Our app is called Hope CC, and we know most of you have it, but you can find it in our app store, um, in, in the app store. Um, all right, so now uh, we're going to give, and what we're going to do, we're just going to pray over our offering together. So if you would join me in praying over our offering. Father, thank you so much. Lord, thank you for how you have richly blessed us. Lord, thank you that you always make a way in our life. Lord, thank you that you are trustworthy and good. Lord, I thank you that you are our provision. You are Jaira. Lord, and I thank you that every time we cry out to you, you are faithful. And Lord, we just want to come to you with all that we have. 
Lord, I pray that you would stir our hearts, Lord, to give a sacrifice, to give an offering that is pleasing to you. Lord, would you give us a broken and contrite spirit this morning, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, I, I pray that as we choose to give to you, Lord, that um, we would have faith that what we're doing is not just a physical act, but it is a spiritual act, that when we give into your kingdom, it is expanding, Lord, that you are working on our behalf. And so, Lord, we, in faith, choose to give to you this morning. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we have a testimony from Brother Joseph. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. It's great to see all of you here this morning. I love that song that says he will not fail. We are all here because God has not failed us. Amen. Amen. We are all here because he has not failed us. Amen. This morning I'm going to share a testimony about the homeless ministry and how that is going. So Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So we all know how the homeless ministry has begun. Uh, you know, during the year we prayed about it. And God has already been moving mightily with the homeless ministry. Um, there's been a team that's been prayer walking and seeding the territory that we are ministering at for some time since September led by Brother Ben Curtis. And this team has been seeding the soil, seeding the ground with prayer and warring in the spirit before the physical actions can come about. Amen. And God has been increasing our efforts and multiplying that exponentially. Um, on this past Monday night, the first HSSM team went out. Uh, there's a team that has been going out on Monday nights for the next um, several weeks. And we're going to go minister to the homeless people. And on Monday, we saw an incredible move of God. Um, there were a few people that made the decision for Jesus, gave their life to Jesus for the first time. Amen. And uh, also, it was great to see some of our brothers and sisters in HSSM uh, actually um, you know, going for the first time, ministering to these uh, our brothers and sisters who I will say they're in transition in their lives. Amen. They're in transition out there on the streets. And God is moving mightily. Also, on Wednesday mornings, um, the men's prayer meeting, we've been going out and picking up trash in this uh, specific quadrant area. And God has given us favor with the businesses there. Um, I know for now, myself and members of the team, we can go to Denny's and have free coffee and uh, free, free uh, chocolate. Amen. And they put a lot of cream on top. It's really good. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I mean, the, the cream, you can't beat that. Amen. So uh, God has given us favor and, you know, they are welcoming of prayers. Now they know when they see us, these are the guys that are going to come and pray for us. Amen. That is, that is a good identity to have. Amen. Um, also, there's the gas station right next to Denny's, and they've been open to us. Um, in fact, one time I went there, explained what we're doing. He let me park my car there. Now I know I have a free parking spot. Amen. <laughs> right there. All because of Jesus. Amen. Um, but God is doing an amazing thing. And God is opening doors for us to minister to the homeless neighbors that are there. Um, you know, regardless of what state they are in, when they see love, they recognize love. And love breaks through every addiction. Love breaks through every situation. No matter whether they're off their mind in that moment, the moment they see you approaching them with love, love cuts through the chaff. Amen? And there's that moment of lucidity, so to speak. That, that moment of clarity where they will literally give you that time of day. Amen? And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. So what I ask is that you continue to pray for us. Amen. Continue to pray for God's favor. Continue to pray for the businesses that are out there. In fact, um, on Monday night, there's a far restaurant next to Safeway that received prayer from one of our sisters. Amen. Actually, two of our sisters. They, the business owner and the people there received prayer. And that was quite incredible because, um, you know, the far brothers and sisters tend to a lot of time be of other faiths, right? But these were believers. And the thing is, you don't know who's a believer out there. And so I'll just encourage us when we feel the tug of God on our hearts that talk to this person or talk to that person, whether it's in the grocery store, at the DMV, or wherever it is, take that step of faith. Because you'll be amazed how many believers are out there just waiting for someone to say hi to them in love. Amen? Amen. 
So I just wanted to share that testimony and ask you to continue to pray for us. God is doing a mighty work in Birian. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to sing a lot today about the blood of Jesus. It's not Communion Sunday, but i got to be honest. Sometimes I just sing about the blood on just Communion Sunday, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's... The blood of Jesus, the cross, I mean, that's, that's the foundation of our gospel. So we're going we're gonna to be singing a lot about that today. And I just want to teach you um, part of a new song we're going to be doing later today. Um, just thanking the Lord for what he's done. Thanking the Lord for uh, the sacrifice that he made, for the breaking of his body and the spilling of his, the wine of his blood. And, and part of the song just goes like this. Thank you. For breaking the bread of your body For spilling the wine of your blood Thank you, oh my heart will sing forever Again Thank you for breaking the bread of your body For spilling the wine of your blood Thank you Oh, my heart will sing forever. It's wonderful lyrics. But so, Lord, we do say thank you. May we never take for granted the blood of Jesus. You're bruised and beaten for our iniquities, for our sin. You experience the wrath of God so that we won't have to. You were crushed. You were broken. God, we're so grateful so that we could be free. God, and I pray that that great sacrifice would, would stir something fresh in our heart this morning as we worship you and we thank you, as we celebrate the freedom that you've brought because of the blood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord.
Therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So shake off that burden, shake off that heaviness. It's not for you to have. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. upon him as he took it to the cross he took your burden to the cross so I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree.
thank you. When thinking about what Jesus did on the cross, sometimes we forget that he paid the price of every man, woman, and child up front. He didn't say he would pay the price once we came around. He paid it all up front, all in full. It is finished and it is done. I think of imagine you go to the steakhouse and you buy someone a an expensive steak dinner and they just leave it on the table. Jesus knew that there was a risk of that. He knew that that his people could very well pass up the price that he paid, pass up the beautiful value of the blood that was shed on the cross. But God demonstrated his own love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us before we ever did anything to our name. We couldn't, we were stuck and he paid it all in full. He shed blood. Even if it meant that someone left the steak dinner on the table, it's worth it. He said, it's worth it to pay the price that no one should perish. That's my desire. He paid it all in full. God, you loved us before we had any reason to be loved by you. You saw us in the worst parts. You saw us stuck in our sins, separated from the King of Kings. And because of your great love, you paid the price. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. You deserve everything that we are. We could never speak the words that you deserve. There's no way we could ever fulfill your praises. But we give you all that we are. We thank you for the blood in Jesus' name.
blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, the blood, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. here to cleanse you. To cleanse your heart. To cleanse your conscience. To cleanse your mind. I feel like maybe there have been these voices, these whispers that have become loud accusing you. The voice of the accuser weighing you down. But by the power of his blood, he cleanses us and gives us a clean conscience. So I want to encourage you this morning. If there's anything in your life that has been unconfessed, confess it now before the Lord. Bring it all to him right now. Because he wants to cleanse you now of every weight, of every infirmity, of every bondage. And I hear the voice of the Lord saying something like, <laughs> You are free, you are cleansed. And I silence the voice of the accuser in your life today. So Jesus, I pray that right now, Lord, as everyone has brought their heart before you, that that voice of the accuser would be broken off of them now. Be silenced, enemy. Every lie be torn down now. And Jesus, I ask that you, your blood, would cleanse the conscience, the mind of every single person here. And may your peace wash over every heart. Lord, may your peace like waves just begin to wash over each person. Settle our hearts before you today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue 
to reflect on all that he's done for us and the sacrifice of his love for us. Keep pressing in until you feel the assurance of your cleansing, of your salvation in him. Thank you, Jesus.
just been singing about how he's more than enough he's more than enough he's more than enough and all morning I feel like many of us don't always realize that he's more than enough and the situation that we might be facing seems overwhelming Maybe we're praying for somebody and there's no movement and you've been praying for a long time and there's nothing. And I just feel like God all morning has been saying, one, I'm more than enough. But when we choose to keep looking at our level for the answer, he's bigger than that. And so if that situation feels overwhelming and like you're discouraged, it's because you're not looking up enough because he's more than enough. That means he's big enough and he's bigger than the situation. And I just feel like he's saying, look up. And if the situation still feels un un overwhelming, you haven't put God big enough. He's not big enough yet, so look up again. And if the situation still feels overwhelming, you haven't made God big enough, look up. Because when God, when you see him for who he is and how big he is, it's impossible to see the situation around us because we're looking up. And when I look up, I can't see what's down here. And he's my answer. He's my all in all. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. And I have to trust him because he sees my situation because he's more than enough he's big enough and he will move on my behalf he will answer my prayers he will do what needs to be done because he is more than enough so if you feel overwhelmed with the situation look up and ask yourself, is, am I looking high enough? Do I still feel overwhelmed? If you do, look up again. Look all the way up. And let him minister to you. He knows you. He sees you. He feels your heart. He understands who you are. Let him minister. And let the calm come. Because he sees your situation. And he'll move. It's who he is. He's more than enough.
God, we reach out for you. We lift up our eyes. We look to the heavens and see your glory. Every star and solar system and galaxy. God, as we look up and we see mountains, let us remember that you don't look up to mountains, you look down at them. Whatever the mountain is, whatever the breakthrough is that's needed, you look down from your throne. And by faith in your name, mountains are moved. We reach for you even in the middle of the storm. knowing that you defy all physics. You defy all nature. You are above. You are supernatural to calm the storms. We fix our eyes on you. We reach for you, Jesus. Would you pour out your presence upon us? You are more than enough. I speak blessing in Jesus' name over everyone in this room, everyone watching online. I speak the favor of God be poured out. that you would touch every body, every mind, every heart, every wound. I speak your blessing, Jesus. That you would bless every breath, every step that you establish. speak blessing over families and marriages and kids and co-workers. God, your blessings will not run dry. We speak life into the broken relationships. We speak favor over the places that feel hollow. In Jesus' name, we call dry bones to life. You are more than enough, Jesus. You are more than enough. Thank you, God. Would you take all that we are as an offering for your name, for your kingdom, that you deserve it all. Thank you, Father. You are worthy. You are holy. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. We cry out, holy, holy, holy. Thank you for your presence that's here right now. We want more, God. We want more of you. Release the floodgates of heaven. In Jesus' name.
heard this last week. I'm going to hear it again. The Lord is saying, do not harden your heart. This is a critical point for you. And he's pleading with you, do not harden your heart. Do not give up. Do not push away from the move of the Spirit in your life. Just like the Israelites, that first generation, first generation, they missed out so much because they hardened their heart. And it was their children who enjoyed the promised land. May we today not resist the moving of the Spirit. He's been touching some of your hearts during worship. And it's like, God, I don't want you to touch that place. But he says to you, do not harden your heart. Let me do what I need to do in you. Let my spirit move. Let's take a moment, Pastor Barry, if we could sing of his holiness. And if you're in that situation where you've got an opportunity to either step in deeper or harden your heart, I just encourage you as we, as we pr proclaim his holiness, that we would just stand in full abandon, that we wouldn't harden our hearts, but we would press in deeper. Thank you, Jesus. i 
Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb.
God, we thank you that we can abide in you. We can just simply and fully abide. Abide in the sweetness of your presence. What a gift. That in all your majesty and glory, you would let us sit at your feet. Sit on your lap. That you'd give us access to your courts. that you'd fill us with your spirit, that you'd make us a temple of your name. You are worthy. Would you take us deeper into who you are, deeper into your heart? We bless your name, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to move into the message for today. We've been going through a series titled Called Up. We've been looking at different characters that God has raised up for extraordinary things. We looked at Daniel. We looked at Joseph and Moses. Ordinary men that God called out called up to incredible things. He didn't call them because of some eloquence that they had or because of accolades or their resume. But in each case, he called them to things that were far beyond themselves. Far beyond anything they could accomplish in their own strength. But he said that he would be with them. He would be the one accomplishing his purposes through them. This is the last week of this series. But we're going to add a little bit of a twist. Today we're talking about Jonathan, who is actually called off. Jonathan had the rightful heir to the throne. He was the rightful heir. He was in the bloodline. His father was the king. It was supposed to be his turn to be called up next. And yet God did something different. And he called off what looked like would be the normal progression of kingship. 
So we're going to talk about him today. God, would you move and would you speak to our hearts? We want to know your heart. We want to be people who are willing to respond however you call. People humbly seeking your face, running after your kingdom, and willing to respond to what you're doing. We give you glory in Jesus' name. So in Matthew 23, 11 and 12, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees. And he finishes one portion by saying, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Sometimes we read certain passages about the Pharisees or how Jesus rebuked them. And we think, well, it's a good thing they don't exist anymore. It's a good thing we don't have to deal with the heart of the older brother like in the prodigal son. We look at ourselves, well, I'm, I'm for sure not that person, so don't have to worry about that. When we're surrounded by a culture that is actually very different from the culture of the kingdom, the American dream, climbing the ladder, In our culture, there's this perspective that if you put in the work, if you do the hard things, you can make yourself whatever you want to be. You can get to wherever you look to stand on the ladder. That we can just keep accumulating and glorifying ourselves as we pursue the American dream. The disciples struggle with this as well. In Luke 9, they're having a discussion on greatness. Who's going to be the greatest? Now you think benefit of the doubt. Luke 9, they're just kind of getting going. They're still learning a lot. They're just stepping into this new adventure with Jesus. But then we see this conversation resurface in Luke 22 as well. After they'd had lots of time. And they're still wrestling with this question. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the greatest among us? Who's going to get to be next to Jesus when all is said and done? They're still wrestling with it. So what does it look like in real life? Could surface in jealousy? We see the blessing or the breakthrough that we've been fervently praying for get poured out in someone's life next to us. That's hard. That can be frustrating. God, I've spent time in the quiet place. I've saw your face. I've prayed. I've fasted. I've done everything. And now you give it to the person across the aisle. It can surface in anger. When someone else receives a promotion that we wanted, someone else receives recognition or accolades, it can be frustrating. Wanting to be in the spotlight, even if we mask it with humble pride, I'm guilty of that. I'm really seeking my own exaltation, but if I mask it in humility, then I get looked at even more favorably. We game the system. So on the outside, we look like Mr. Humble. And on the inside, I'm actually out for my own benefit. We know how to play the game. Here's one for me being totally transparent, especially in the last six months. When I see God do something incredible at another church, if I'm not careful... I can get annoyed that God's doing that there and not here. Rather than rejoicing at the fact that God is moving. But it's those subtle things that if we don't address can become toxic and cancerous. 
So today we're going to talk about Jonathan. Most of the time we hear preaching on 1 Samuel 16 and 17 about David being anointed, God's spirit rushing upon him, going and slaying Goliath. But 1 Samuel 18 isn't quite as popular of a passage. But we're going to look at what God has for us in Jonathan's story. So as I said, God's spirit rushed upon David when he was anointed, chapter 16. The very next verse, it says that the spirit of God departed from Saul, his father, who was the king at the time. So there's, the, there's been this exchange of God's spirit where his spirit is resting, residing. David just came back from slaying Goliath. Saul says, I want to talk to this kid. Then we get to verse 1 of chapter 18. And it says, as soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul then calls David into his courts. He said, you're going to serve me in my courts. And a couple verses later, verse 3, Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David. And his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. What's happening here? Jonathan recognized the anointing. He recognized what God was doing right away. He's the rightful heir to the throne, and he says, I'm going to take my robe off. I'm going to make a covenant with David. I'm going to honor what God is doing. Now, on the other side, we see Saul's reaction. So as the chapter goes on, we see that David is successful in everything that he's doing. And Saul actually gives him command of the men of valor in Israel. And he has all kinds of success. But then what happens is the people begin chanting praises. And it starts off by saying, Saul has killed his thousands, which Saul probably liked the, the sound of that, until they finish by saying, but David... His ten thousands. Now, mind you, David is still not that old. Saul gets jealous and angry. He's getting overshadowed. He's the king of the nation. This is my throne. How dare this kid overshadow me? But in reality, it wasn't Saul's throne. He was mistaken and deceived. The throne was given to him, but it wasn't his. So Saul begins to have this pent-up anger. He actually throws a spear at David at one point. Then he starts trying to figure out how he can either throw David off or get him killed. He thinks if he just keeps throwing him into battle, eventually the guy's got to die. And then he thinks, well, maybe I can get him off track by offering one of my daughters to him. And his first daughter, David's not interested. Then he comes to him with his second daughter. And we get to verse 25 in chapter 18. Then Saul said, Thus shall you say to David, the king desires no bride price except a hundred foreskins of Philistines, that he may be avenged of the king's enemies. Now Saul, Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. Now let's get something straight. There is definitely a bride price. The Philistines, David probably wasn't that concerned with. And maybe there's something I'm missing, but if that was offered to me, <laughs> oh man, that's a weird that's a weird request from the king. I'd have to stop and think a moment if I'm gonna I have to really stop and say, do I really wanna be at that Valentine's banquet tonight or not? <laughs> I don't think I wanted that much. 
But David goes out. And he takes out 200 Philistines, double the amount. Again, just displaying the favor of God over his life. Saul kept wanting to see him fall. And God kept pouring out success and favor. We get to verse 28. But when Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michal, Saul's daughter, loved him, Saul was even more afraid of David. So Saul was David's enemy continually. It's the same pattern we see in all these stories. Saul knew that the Lord was with David. David didn't slay Goliath because he was a great fighter. Daniel didn't interpret dreams because he just knew the answers. Joseph didn't become second in command in Egypt because he did it himself. It was because the Lord was with him and it was evident. So Saul recognizes this and it makes him even more angry and afraid. And Saul was David's enemy continually. Saul begins to try and get Jonathan and his servants to get rid of David, to kill him. Jonathan very quickly goes and alerts David and then talks his dad down. But that doesn't last so long because Saul eventually throws another spear at David. How many of us? someone threw a spear at us, would continue and show up for work the next day, waiting for the second one. But David knew that he had not been called anywhere else yet. He remained faithful even in hostile circumstances, knowing that he had already been anointed to be king. This is one of the radical things of David's life. All throughout this 15 or so years between David and Saul, before David actually became king on the throne, David honored the fact that Saul had been placed there and God had not removed him yet. He honored the fact that God had called him to that place amidst all the abuse that he had endured. Spears, out to kill him, all this kind of stuff. He even tries to get his wife involved in David's death. And Michal covers for him. Very interesting story how she helped save his life. But now we get to chapter 20, verse 16. And, and Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, may the Lord take vengeance on David's enemies. Now, just a little while earlier, it was stated that who's his enemy? His father. It makes me think in the New Testament when Jesus talks about hating your father and mother or family in comparison to Jesus, that our love and our devotion is so set on Christ that the contrast looks as if we hate everyone else because there's such a distinction. Jonathan here is recognizing exactly what God is doing, and he chooses that over even his own family. The favor and the blessing of God through a covenant with David. Then Saul comes directly to Jonathan. And he's mad. He recognizes that Jonathan is not aiding in the process of fixing this problem. We get to verse 31. Saul is speaking to Jonathan. He says, for as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Therefore, send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. He's telling Jonathan, you need to get on board. You need to care about this. This is our throne. This is our kingdom. 
And if you have any hope of establishing a kingdom under yourself, you had better bring David here to me. Because we are over if David is allowed to follow through with what God's doing. And what does Jonathan do? He remains steadfast. Because Jonathan is not looking for his own kingdom to be established. He knows whose kingdom it is. And he acts entirely contrary to the perspective of his father. He defends David and Saul even throws a spear at him. But he goes off and he lets David know, you got to leave. Time passes. We're a few chapters down. Saul is outright pursuing David, hunting him. And there's a moment that Jonathan and David meet in secret. In chapter 23, verse 17. And he said to him, do not fear. The hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel. And I shall be next to you. Saul, my father, also knows this. NASB, an amplified version, translated as I will be second to you. Second in command. Jonathan is unwavered about the thought of losing his rightful throne. He chooses to step into what God's doing, acknowledging his anointed. He said, I'll put God's anointed over my family, over my throne, over my resources. And he doesn't just say, I'll begrudgingly leave and forget the whole thing happened. He said, I'm going to stay, and I'm going to be second to the throne that I should have had. That's hard. It's one thing to see God exalt someone else. It's another thing to be through it thick and thin and say, I'm actually going to step in, and I'm going to be a part of raising up God's anointed. I'm going to put aside the jealousy, the anger, the frustration, the bitterness, I'm going to say, hey, it's not my kingdom anyways. I'm here for his kingdom. So when we look at Daniel and Joseph and Moses and David, the point was not about them. And we will look at those like Aaron and Jonathan. It wasn't about them either. It was about one true king. And when God calls us and anoints us for a particular purpose, raises us up, praise God, we get to be part of his plan. And when he calls off the plans that we expect and he calls us to serve, praise God, we get to be a part of his plan. What a critical role that Jonathan played in this story. What an amazing testimony of his obedience and his willingness. And it might not be front headlines, but it was crucial to what God was doing. We see in Mark 10, verse 43, it says, But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. To give his life as a ransom for many. There is no one who deserved more exaltation than Jesus. And yet him in all of his glory, him on his throne, he said, I'm going to wash their feet. I'm going to get down on my hands and knees. I'm going to wash their feet. Even the one who's going to betray me right before I go through the most brutal death in all of existence. 
bearing the weight of the world, the physical, the spiritual load. Jesus said, I'm here to be a servant. Go ahead and stand with me. God, we thank you that we're here to establish your kingdom. We're here to be ambassadors of your kingdom. We're here to exalt your throne, not our own. May we never be deceived into thinking we're trying to preserve our own throne. May we never be distracted with seeking our own exaltation. Because you, Jesus, are the one to be exalted. You're the one we're here to lift high. God, in the moments where you call us up, when you raise us up by no merit of our own, we give you praise that you're the one who's moving. That it's your spirit inside of us that's accomplishing your purposes. And at other times when you call it off and you call us to step in as a servant for the one you're raising up, let us do it with joyful hearts, knowing that it's you that we serve. God, if there are areas that you've blessed us and raised us up, I pray that we would always come to you with open hands. That if tomorrow you shifted the blessing to someone else, we would still begin our day with gratefulness and joy. If tomorrow you called us to sell the business or step down from the podium or step away from the leadership or step away from the recognition, God, would you give us hearts that we'd be willing and eager to honor your anointed. We're here for you, God. We're here for you, God. We bless your name. God, would you speak to us right now? God, who are the people in our lives that you're inviting us to serve? To lay down jealousy or anger or frustration or competition? God, who is it in our lives that you're inviting us to step in as a certain servant? To make ourselves second to so that we can support and raise up your anointed. Would you speak to us right now, God? Would you give us eyes to see so that instead of waiting around for our turn to be exalted, we would be pressing into exactly where you're calling us. That you give us humility, whether we're the David or we're the, the Jonathan in every given circumstance. We give you our yes. We're here for you. In Jesus' name. One last thing before we wrap up. We want to make it a priority to honor the yes that people give to God. Honor the risk that's taken to follow after the things God's speaking. The last few months we've been talking about standing before God with open hands. Going to God and saying, God, if you had a clean slate with my life, what is it that you would put on my plate in this season? And we have a member of our staff who's chosen to say yes to a step of faith. Kale and Jana, Kale is our administrator. And God has used him in such critical ways in this last year with this transition. I couldn't tell you how grateful I am for him. 
And now God is calling him to take a step of faith. He's not going anywhere. He's not moving. They're not transitioning churches, but he feels led to take a step of faith out of vocational ministry into some really cool things that God's doing. And I can't help but be so excited for what God's on the, how he's on the move. Because he's got incredible things that he's going to bring in their faithfulness. But before we close today, we're going to bring him up. I'm going to invite up elders, staff members, ministry leaders, spouses. And we're just going to pray and lay hands over, over Kale. His wife, Jan, is downstairs serving our kids. But we're just going to pray and commission them and honor the yes. We want to be a people that are willing to give God our yeses. And when God does, even if it's different than our plans, when God calls someone to take that step of faith, we're going to rejoice. We're going to commission them because God has incredible things in store. So, Kale, if you could come up. Lord Jesus, Lord, you're so good. Lord, I thank you for this man of God. I thank you for Jana, the woman of God, Lord, that they are the ones who would say yes to whatever you called them to. Lord, they have, been, they have had a yes in their heart since I've known them, Lord, just willing to give it all, willing to go wherever you would call them. Lord, they are lovers of your heart, lovers of you. You are so faithful. We align with what you're doing in their lives, and we say, yes, Lord, we agree with you. We just release anointing over them, deeper anointing that they would encounter you, deeper, more powerfully in the secret place. Lord, increase their vision, increase their ability to see you, to sense you, to hear you, to know you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you. I just see a a deep cavern being dug, like, a, Lord, I just thank you for what you're digging, what you're unearthing that you have for them. I just feel like uh, it's a deep and powerful work that you're doing that's not just for them. It's in them. It's through them. And it's for your kingdom. So we bless them right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the gift that each one of them are to our family, to our body. Lord, we love them. And we bless you. We thank you for them, Lord. Lord, what a joy it is for us to be able to know people that you are so beloved of you and to get to know them better and better in this family. And Lord, for me especially in this man. Jesus, I'm so excited for the next step for him. And I praise you and thank you, Lord, that his eyes are always on you that his delight is in you and your delight is in him. I agree, Lord, that there be a new and special anointing that you will prepare the way right now, Father, for those that will be led to you because of his steps of faith. We praise you and thank you, Father, for this, your son, and for Jana, your daughter. In Jesus' name. When Peter got out of the boat, it wasn't over with that first step. And in life, we have different seasons and different opportunities. And when you, when you step out, you're looking for that door. And God says that he'll open a door that nobody can close. And he'll close doors that nobody can open. That when you make those next steps, you'll know for sure that you're moving with God. I just thank you, Father, for giving wisdom beyond and above his own as he makes different steps in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that in the midst of the past two years when, when so many people were moving on and leaving church, Lord, these two showed up. They didn't know anyone. But they might have known one person, one family. But Lord, I thank you that <clears throat> they said yes in that moment they said yes to joining a family they they really didn't know but God had spoken to them and so Lord we thank you that you have been with them every yes of the way <laughs> and they're saying another yes right now 
And Lord, I thank you. As we sang earlier, you will never let them down. You are their firm foundation. And they've never been so glad to trust in Jesus. And so God, we just thank you in advance for how you're gonna use them and that their yes today is gonna bless many lives, countless lives. And the yeses that we all make today affect the next generation. So God, I thank you that there's a new anointing on their life for the next generation. What, what Kale's about to do is gonna capture the next generation in a way that many of us would have never thought. And so we bless them, we bless Jana, we thank you for providing for all of their needs according to your riches. <laughs> in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for Kale and Jana. We thank you for their faithfulness, their willingness to step out. We anoint them in the season. God, everything that you have in store, that your spirit would rush upon them. God, that you would pour out a double portion. That God, you're just getting started. You're gonna go above and beyond. You're gonna surprise them with how many things fall into place that they didn't even realize when they took the step. God, would you expand their borders, expand their capacity, pour your favor out upon them. God, that this would be a mighty move of your kingdom, that you'd use them in extraordinary ways. God, we thank you that the, the new season is gonna be even greater than the last season. That you're moving and you're breathing. We pray for a fresh wind and a fresh fire over each of them and everything that they put their hands to for your kingdom and your throne in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Kale will st still be on staff with us until the end of February. I encourage you, bless him, thank him. There's so much that he's been faithful to steward that is beneath the radar that you would have no idea. He's involved in everything. Thank you for being here today. We bless you guys as you go. I'm going to invite up prayer teams. If you need prayer for anything, we'd love to, to speak life and anything that God's wanting to encourage you with through our prayer team. Have a great day.